I was recently asked by a client how they could provide training on using SAP Enable Now simulations for users as they carry out the simulation or at the point they carry out the simulation. So not requiring them to go on training in advance of that or any pre-learning just to know how to use the training material. So here's my attempt at fulfilling that need. What I decided to do was to use a book page and to insert that into the simulation and give the users the option of viewing that book page to get the help before they actually launch the simulation. So first of all, I went away and created a book page that has all of the information that I want on it. In this case, I'm just providing help for demo mode. So I've got one book page, I've got a screenshot of demo mode, and then a bunch of bubbles that are introduced on a timer showing different information on there. Next, within the simulation, I inserted that as a step. You can do that fairly easily. From here, I went to insert add step. That gives you a step with nothing in it. And then within that step, I went to the insert macro button and selected book page. And that book page macro has a property on it of book page. And that is where you select the book page that you want to use. And I went away and selected that particular book page. So far, so good. But next thing I need to do is I need to provide the users with a way of displaying this book page if they need the help. So what I did on my first screen of my simulation, I always like to have a start screen that shows me a little scenario, what they're doing, explains what they're doing before they get into the actual application itself. And that is a great place to put a help button. So I have a help button on here and this will, when it's clicked on, it's going to link to the next step. Okay, this link to is the next step. It's under here, under link to actions, and you just select the next step in here. Okay, so what that will do, as soon as the user clicks this button, it will jump to the next step, which is this step here with my book page in it. Now, if they don't want the help, this will effectively time out before they click the, that button. Um, this is going to be displayed for 10 seconds. And at the end of those 10 seconds, it will continue and hit this which is a jump to step macro inserted by insert special macro jump to step. And this jumps over my book page and right to here in step three, start the transaction. That's what we're jumping to here. So if the user does not click on that help button here, progress will basically jump over that help step and jump straight to here in step three. If they do click that button here to display the help, it will display this help book page and then it will go on to step three after that. So let's have a look at how that works in practice. I'm just going to preview that. Here's my first page. I've got 10 seconds to read this. If I want help, I'll click on this button here and that will go on to the next step, which is my book page. Launches straight into that within the simulation. Now I've got a progress bar across the bottom of here and bubbles are introduced explaining different things on the screen. And as that happens, the progress bar um, progresses and then it will stop at one point because then I switch to doing something else just for the fun of it and just to make things a little bit different. At this point, before it's got all the way to the end, so the user knows that there's more that they have to do, I've got here a number of hotspots and I want the user to hover over each of those to show information about that particular element on the screen. So I'll give them in some instructions here and then they need to hover over these hotspots and watch the progress bar as I hover over them. I hover over the first one, the progress bar moves a bit further along and I get a bubble explaining what I'm looking at here. This is kind of an interesting one because another thing I did here, because I want to explain the progress bar um, during playback. And as the second paragraph here shows, you can jump to any other step. And if you hover over a point, it will show you a little tooltip of what that step is. And I've cheated here and I've put another image overlaid on top of my whole screen image that has this tooltip on it. And I've got that to display only when the user hovers over this. So they hover over that, they get the bubble and they see something change on the screen as well. So that progressed the bar across the bottom a little bit more. I hover over another one, it progresses it even more. I've still got a little bit to do because I've got a third one to hover over. And once I hover over that, it shows me more information. The progress bar completes 
and then I get something here telling them how to continue. Just in case they're not sure, even though I show here that they've reached the end of everything that's viewable on this page, in case they're not sure, I've got a little thing that goes over the top of the whole screen showing them where they need to click to progress. And in case they miss that being popped up, I get it to fade out and then back in again every five seconds just to draw their attention to it. And as soon as they go and click on that, it now goes into my demo mode in the simulation, effectively the start of that and goes through. Okay, so that was how to provide help if they need it directly from within the simulation. Let's just go back to the start of this again and look at what happens if I don't click that, that question mark to display the help. So what's on the screen at the moment will display for 10 seconds and then automatically it goes straight into the simulation, bypasses that help like it doesn't exist. Okay, so that's how it works and it works very well. Let's go back and look at how I built out some of that stuff. So if I go back to my simulation here, again, really I've just got a book page in here that is jumped to by clicking on this button here and jumped over if they don't do anything else right here. This is actually a very useful feature to have. The only problem with this, I would probably want to put this book page step with all of this help on it within the simulation template so that it's then available for all simulations and I don't need to include it every time. It's just gonna be included whenever I create a new simulation. That simulation template also includes this start box here that gives me this image and these things and a similar one on the end as well. However, the problem that I've got here is that this here, the jump over the help, jump to step macro, I have to say exactly what step I want it to jump to. And that step has to exist in the simulation. And until I've actually gone and recorded the simulation and created these, I've not created the step that I want it to jump to. So although I can include this book page and all of that stuff within the simulation template, I'm still gonna to have to tell my authors to come in here each time, change this jump over the help step and specify the correct jump target in here. So that's the only real niggle in that. So let's look at a couple of things on the book page itself, just to explain how I built those things out. Most of this is fairly simple. Again, I've got some information like these bubbles here that are being introduced automatically on a timer. So I've got a timer that will bring in each of those those bubbles as we look at them. Now, once I've displayed those things, it then goes to showing these hotspots. And the way I've got these hotspots set up is I want the user to look at all three of them. Each time they look at one of them, the progress bar is gonna progress a little bit more, but they've got to display all three of them before I display my arrow here that points to the next button. So how I did that was I used a collector object and the main thing in here really is this on count three. This says once they have looked at three of these things, then display this group that's got the next arrow and the instructions on it, okay? So that's being done when they hit a count of three. The other bits in here for um, on count one, two, and then three, this progress plus X hotspots, this is really to push that progress bar a bit further towards the end. And I've explained previously how to provide a progress bar. There's a separate video for that if you're interested. What I had to do here was stop it short by 300 pixels and then advance it each time they navigated over a hotspot, just push it another 100 pixels further along until it's reached the very end. So that was actually a fairly easy thing to do, but again, it emphasizes to the users that there's more stuff to look at. And then finally, in case you're wondering um, how I got this arrow in here, which looks like it's been hand-drawn, is because it actually has. What I did was I created an image, actually a whole sequence of images of an arrow. Um, I did it in the Snagit editor. I just drew an arrow using the pen on my tablet and set it with a transparent background. So that's generally the bulk of it. The only other thing I'll point out is uh, this is specific to demo mode. Okay, because that's all we were providing at this particular client is just the demo mode and the help there. But if you wanted to, you could either genericize this page so it actually covers all of the modes, or you could put in separate steps here with separate pages, one for demo mode, one for practice mode, one for test mode, and so on. 
And then the help button, you would need to have multiple help buttons to point to the relevant mode depending on what they're in. But that is actually very easy to do because on this image, there are a set of properties that say what mode do you want this to appear in. And on the book page, there is also a similar thing under simulation where I can say what modes I want this book page to appear in. So I can set up images that only appear in a certain mode that then link to the book page that only appears in that same mode. And that way I can provide embedded help for each of the individual modes. And depending on which mode the user is in, when they click that help button, it will show them the help specific to that mode. Okay, so that was it. A few interesting examples in there, a few things that you can do. Um, not necessarily just for this particular scenario and use case, they're useful skills that you can apply in other areas as well. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. If you did, please subscribe. Thank you.